Hey, Gary Baker here with Publisher Report. In today's video, we're going to continue with how to create a low content book and publish that low content book as a children's book on Amazon using Amazon KDP. So far in this series, and I'll leave a card up here in the right hand corner, what we've done is we've done the research and came up with the idea, we created the interior, and we also created the cover. Of course, our book is Counting Robots, so today we're actually going to upload the book into Amazon and get it published and get it up for sale. So before we pop over to Amazon KDP, let's hop on the computer and take a look at exactly what we have and then move over to Amazon KDP and get this book uploaded and published. So here we are on the computer and as you can see right here, what I have is I've created two PDFs. Again, all this information is in the videos that we've covered already. The playlist is in the cards. I'll also leave a link in the description to all these videos as well as the playlist. So if you haven't, you can catch up where we created the interior and the cover. So let's go ahead and take a look at the interior and the cover and then we'll start the upload process. So the first one is Count the Robots 1 to 10, 24 pages, 8.5 by 8.5. Of course, this is a square book. So when we open that, that file up, you'll see right there it's 24 pages. And you can see the nice little 8.5 by 8.5 squares. And then if we were to minimize this, you can see that each page is a nice square. And we created this interior in Canva. Again, all this is covered in the other videos where we're walking through this step by step. So what is the other file that we have? The other file here is the full cover. And you can see that right there as well. This is the complete cover, the front cover here on the right and the back cover here on the left. And of course, if we were to minimize that, you could see it's a nice rectangle at this stage because you have the front cover, you have the spine in the middle where the book will actually fold over and all the pages will stack in there nice, nicely and then the back cover. So those are the two files, the two PDFs that we need that we created using Canva in the videos in this series leading up to this stage where we're actually now going to upload it. So let's jump over into Amazon KDP and create our book and get it published. So at this stage, you need to log in to kdp.amazon.com. Of course, if you don't have an account, go ahead and create an Amazon account. Most people at this stage will already have an Amazon account. It's the personal account that you use for shopping. That is the account you should use to actually publish your books. So inside of this, you can see that all you need to do here is click here under create a new title and you're going to add this as a paper book. So you're going to click the plus paper book button and get started. Then you're gonna select your language. Our book is in English, the book title and the subtitle. Of course, this book title is the exact phrase that is written on your cover. In our case, the front cover says count the robots. So this is exactly what needs to go in this field. Your subtitle is going to be the ideas that you came up with during the search, and it's going to be exactly what describes your book. Take note here that this is not about keyword stuffing. This is about providing information that tells what your book is about. Count the Robots is the title of the book, so therefore people know that they're gonna be counting robots. So in the subtitle, you want to say what the book is about. There's lots of examples here, there's lots of schools of thought, but in reality, all you're doing, if, if you go to Amazon and take a look, and again, we did that in the idea phase, but let's go ahead and go back to Amazon and take a look at this and get an idea of what some people are using in the subtitle to get some better ideas for exactly what this should look like. So over on Amazon, you're simply gonna type in the search bar what it is you're looking for. So in this case, we are talking about counting books. Now, when you see all this pop up in here, this is a Chrome extension that will give you keywords. And in this case, yes, you do want to use keywords in your subtitle. You want to be able to describe what the book actually is. But again, remember, we're not keyword stuffing, meaning we're not just throwing random words into the subtitle because this is going to show up in the actual display of the book. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. So you wanna make sure that it makes sense when someone sees the book and it's appealing in the case that, hey, yeah, that sounds like a book that I would like to either buy and read or buy as a gift or buy, in this case, for a 
kid that's interested in counting, specifically counting robots. So here we're looking at kids counting books. So we'll go ahead and just click on that and see what some of the results show us. So here we typed in kids counting books. We'll just simply scroll down here and you're gonna see things like tabbed, tabbed book boards, my first number, let's get counting. Here, count the dinosaurs. This is the one we used as the example for creating our book. So as you can see here, a fun picture puzzle book for two to five year olds. That is the perfect subtitle because it is a fun picture puzzle book and it is for two to five year olds. So in this case, we could go with a fun picture puzzle book for two to five year olds or we could expand on that. We could say two to six year olds. But again, what we're doing here is we're making sure that we're filling in all this information to make sure that it communicated exactly what is inside of our book. So if you were to just copy that right there, you could go over here and copy that and then go back to your KDP title. And again, you're just putting it in right there. And in our case, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to two to six year olds. And I think that works. Count the Robots, a fun picture puzzle book for two to six year olds. It describes what our book is. And it also uses the information that we saw for the book that we modeled our robot book after, which was Count the Dinosaurs. Again, this is optional, so take note that it doesn't have to be here, but it is what is considered metadata. And metadata is data or words that describes or adds to the description of your book. And that is how Amazon is going to index your book and categorize it to make sure it's available inside of the search function. And that's how people are going to find your book by typing in words in the search bar, therefore, allowing them to find it based on the information you're entering here in the book title and the subtitle. Series, this information is optional. Edit edition number, again, it's optional. Author, here, you're going to come up with an author name. Now this gets into the idea of should you use your own name? Should you use a pen name? Should it be something about puzzle books? Again, this has many schools of thought. The best practice here is if you are going to publish a series of books, or in this case, a book about counting robots. It's a children's series of books. So what I did is I came up with a pen name that no one is using. That sort of sounds like it's in the genre or the niche of kids' books or kids' educational books. But you can use whatever you like as long as it's not copyrighted or trademarked or it's not already in use. Of course, if it's your name, it's your name. So go ahead and enter your name. But remember here, again, not the keyword stuff, and that means not to use words just because you think it will help you index your book or will help Amazon categorize your book or give it a boost. So don't use things like counting or puzzle or anything like that because Amazon will not take that information. But you do have to enter something in here. So for that, you would just say your name. So if your name was Bob and your last name was Bobbers, then you would just enter Bob Bobbers and you would carry on. Contributors, this is if you want to give illustrators, editors, and translators credit in your book. Of course, you can enter that information, it is optional. Here is the description and this is what will appear on your book. So we'll go back to Amazon and take a look at this. And I'll also show you a tool that will help you format this using HTML tags so it looks a little better and I'll show you exactly what that looks like and what it doesn't look like here inside of the description. You have 4,000 characters, and this is part of your metadata. And again, that metadata is data or words that describe your book that help index it and help it get found on Amazon. So you want this to be detailed in describing exactly what your book is. It is also the sales page for your book, meaning when people find your book and they click on it, this is part of the information that's going to show up so you want to make it detailed as well as appealing. So when we're back over on Amazon and we're looking at books, of course, count the dinosaurs right here. If we were to click on that, acting as a buyer, you can see here, count the dinosaurs. This is the title. This is the title that's on the book, count the dinosaurs. Everything after the colon is the subtitle. And then you can see the description. Can you count all the dinosaurs with horns? Are there more red or green dinosaurs? You'll soon discover in this fun game, Count the Dinosaurs, you'll see that this is bolded, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that. So what we'll do is we'll just copy this so I can show you exactly how you can make this look just like this. Again, 
don't copy, just use descriptions like this as inspiration. As well as I just wanna show you how this bolded is going to look inside of the HTML configuration. And I'm gonna show you the tool that does that. So you'd enter that information in your description. If you were to just enter it like this, it would just show up as plain text. But now I'm gonna show you the tool that will actually create this HTML look to include that bolded count the dinosaurs. So over at kindlepreneur.com, as you can see here on the screen, there is a book description generator. And what you're gonna see here are the font sizes, the font styles, as well as icons. So in this case, you can copy this in there. And if you want to bold count the dinosaurs, you would just simply click bold right there. If you wanted to italicize something, you would simply click italic. If you wanted to add an icon here, so for example, if you were adding a description, what, what is inside the book, then you would put like a check and you would say full color pictures or you could put a star, you could say a robot on every page. And you can see it's just that simple to edit right here inside of this. And here is the key. You're going to click on generate my code and you're going to copy this code. As you can see, there's a bunch of HTML tags in here. These are the pieces of information that is going to make it look like it looked over on Amazon. So we'll go ahead and we'll go back to KDP. Here we'll select all this and delete it and then you'll add those codes in there. As you can see, you do have 3,250 characters left. So if you can logically enter more information that describes your book and make it more detailed as possible, then it is beneficial to use all 3,250 characters that you have remaining. So make sure that you think about that and you really put some time and effort into creating these descriptions. Publishing rights. I own the copyright and hold the necessary publishing rights. This is a public domain work. If you own it, which you should, you'll go ahead and you will click I own the copyright and hold the publishing necessary, hold the publishing rights necessary and continue. Now here is the most debated and the most discussed topic around loading a book and trying to sell your book on Amazon KDP and it is around keywords. Choose up to seven keywords that describe your book. Choose up to seven keywords to, that describe your book. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks here. And each block holds up to 50 characters. So what should you put in here? The first thing you shouldn't put in here is words that you've already used in your title and subtitle because that is duplicates and Amazon says don't do it. And they say that because they're simply just not going to use it because it's a waste of time and space because you've already said it and it's in your title and your subtitle, which are the two most important things about your book because that is what Amazon is going to look at first to understand what your book is. This is the next stage of describing your book. And in here, in these boxes, you're going to add other information that describes your book, meaning words like synonyms, meaning things that people are going to be looking for that describe your book that may not be what the exact word is that you use in your title or subtitle. For example, counting. If your book is about counting, it's also about puzzles or quizzes or brain teasers, stuff like that. But you need to make sure that it's describing your book exactly on what it is. And this is where you get into using some tools for research, but really it is more just common sense. And let me show you exactly what Amazon has to say about this so it makes a little more sense and you can just move along here without wasting or spending too much time fretting over it and thinking you have to get it right. Because remember, you can always come back and change this as you do more research or as you see your book is not performing as well as you think it should. So here is the information that Amazon KDP provides for you about making your book discoverable with keywords. Of course, I'll leave a link in the description, so check that out. But here is the key. Make your book more discoverable with keywords. To make your book easier to find on Amazon, you need keywords that accurately portray your book's content and reflect the words customers will use when they search. This is the key. The words customers will use when they search. Along with factors like sales history and Amazon bestseller ranks, that's the BSR, relevant keywords can boost your placement and search results on Amazon.com. Again, 
these keywords can boost your search results if they apply to your book. Don't use words that don't apply to your book, thinking maybe someone might search for this and it might be unique and then they'll see my book and then they'll buy it. That's not the way it works. Make sure you're using the words that describe your book. And when you do that, Amazon will notice that and they will use those keywords to index your book to help it get found. So you scroll down here, how to add and update keywords. We're already looking at that. The focus here is best practices. Combine keywords in the most logical order. Customer search for military science fiction, but probably not for fiction science military. So arrange the words in the order just like someone would type them. Use up to seven keywords or short phrases. Keep an eye on the character limit. That means there's only 50 characters available. What will happen is if you type over 50 characters, it will just cut it off and you won't be able to save that. So don't go over 50 characters. Before publishing, search using keywords you're considering on Amazon. So they're telling you right here to simply just go to Amazon and search for the keywords that you think people would use to find your book. And we'll take a look at that here in a second on the Amazon search bar. If you get ir irrelevant or unsatisfying results, make some changes. They're telling you right here, if your book's not being found or you can't find your book once it's published and you think it should be indexed under the keywords that you created, go ahead and change it. When searching, look at the suggestions that appear in the search field dropdown. Again, we're gonna be doing that. The, they do that natively, but there's also a recommended Chrome plugin, the one that you just saw, and I'll show you again. Of course, I'll leave a link in the description so you can install that if you like. And then think like a reader. Imagine how you'd search if you were a customer. This is the key. If you were a customer, and you probably are a customer on Amazon, think about the keyword you type in when you're trying to find something and just put those keywords in your search fields. Don't overthink it. Don't get paralyzed by overanalyzing everything and not being able to come up with these keywords to keep you from publishing your book. Because again, they're optional. They don't even need to be there, but they can and they will help your book get indexed and found. And by indexed, again, I mean that will be the data, the keywords that Amazon is going to use to display your book to people when they actually search in the Amazon search bar to find the book, the type of book you've created. Another thing here is useful keyword types, the setting. So for example, the setting, if it's in Colonial America, use that. The character type, single dad, better, veteran, character roles, strong female lead, plot themes, coming of age, forgiveness, story, tone, dystopian, feel good. So keywords to avoid. You don't want to use information covered elsewhere. Subjects that claim about quality, so don't say, best children's book ever, right? Time sensitive information, don't use available now, sell. Information common to most items in the category, don't say book. And of course, if you misspell the words, no one's gonna find them unless they type in the misspelled word. So again, take a look at this. Other great information here, all about metadata and keyword tips to include a video here. This is about 25 minutes long. You should watch it, understand it. Again, link will be in the description for this page. So let's go back to Amazon and look at some of the keywords that we could possibly use to describe our book. So this is the example we used, Count the Dinosaurs, a fun picture puzzle book for two to five year olds. So let's just look for puzzle book for two to five year olds. We'll copy that and then we'll go back to Amazon and actually just search. So here we are back on Amazon and another quick note here is Typically, you want to do these searches while you're not signed in because when you're signed into your account, first, it will skew the results, meaning that the results will be based upon you as a customer. So the things you searched for in the past and sort of Amazon making recommendations for you in your account. So if you're not logged in and you're in an incognito tab, you will be as close to a customer that is looking for this book as you possibly can and there'll be no results that could make the results look a little different. So here we were going to search for puzzle books for two to five year olds and simply hit enter. So here you can see did you mean puzzle book for two to five year old versus old which has the s on there. So again that's just giving you some valuable information right there to make sure that you are typing in the words that people are looking for. Amazon gives you this information because they've indexed this. And when you when I say indexed, you can see here that one of 16 of over 6,000 results for puzzle book for two to five year old. So that means there are 6,000 books that are registering for that keyword, that are indexed for that keyword, meaning 
Amazon knows they have 6,000 books that if someone types puzzle book for two to five year old, that meet the requirement, that satisfy this searcher intent. So you're gonna scroll down through here and you're gonna see Count the Monsters, a fun picture puzzle book for two to five year olds. You're gonna see a bestseller here, which is Kindergarten Math. It's a counting book again. Where could the cats be? More counting books. You're gonna see a Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Count the Animals, a fun picture puzzle book, Count the Dinosaurs. Okay, so you're gonna see here that this is a keyword phrase that you should definitely be using for counting. And you can see that there are other keywords here, a fun interactive picture puzzle book, counting puzzle books, all great ideas. Again, you can see here, preschool and kindergarten prep book, gifted and talented, pre-K, toddlers, guessing book for toddlers. So while you're doing research, while you're checking for your keywords, while we type this in, also look at the description and the title here, and then go here into the search bar and just erase some of this and go back and look for puzzle book. And you'll see puzzle book for kids, puzzle book for teens, eight year olds, five year olds, three year olds. So all these keywords, puzzle book for a three year old. So puzzle book for a three year old, for six year old, okay? These are the kind of keywords that you want to use. So in this case, puzzle book for two to five year old is definitely something that we want to use in our keyword description. So we'll go back to Amazon KDP and we'll enter that in the keyword phrase. And then what you would want to do, you would just want to keep describing who your book is for. So it's for preschoolers, it's also for kindergartners. So preschooler, kindergartner, so that's now puzzle book for two to five year olds, puzzle books for preschoolers, puzzle books for kindergartners. And again, you want these phrases to be in the order that people would type them and search for them. So for example, kindergarten, go back to Amazon, type in puzzle book for kindergarten, then you hit search, you're gonna see right there, there's 5,000 results for puzzle book for kindergarten. Again, this describes your book, so Amazon knows it is a puzzle book, it's also a counting book, so they will index and reference your book when people are searching for it. So again, don't overthink this, just logically think what someone would type when they're searching for my book and put it into this box and you get seven boxes here. So again, a puzzle book for two to five year olds, that would be something that you would use in your keywords if you haven't already used it in your subtitle. In this case, we already used in our subtitle, but we didn't use preschooler or kindergartner. So preschooler puzzle book, might be something someone is searching for. And if your keyword research, again, if your keyword research shows that that is a phrase that people are using to look for the type of book you created, then most definitely 100% use that in your keywords. That's it. If someone is searching for this phrase, then use it in your keywords if it describes your book. If no one is searching for this phrase or it doesn't describe your book, don't put it in your keywords. Keep it simple, move forward, get your book published, Again, Amazon has told you, you can come back and you can change this at a later date once you get more data and you understand more what people are searching for. So one last thing, preschool or puzzle book, we'll go ahead and we'll copy that and I'm gonna show you the Chrome extension that I have running that is going to give you information about more keywords. So we'll go back to Amazon and we'll go ahead and we'll type in preschool or puzzle book. And then we'll take the word book off. And here you can see preschooler puzzle. You can see preschool puzzle sets. Of course, this drop down right here is Amazon Search Expander. Again, link in the description for this Chrome extension. I'll also do a video at a later date on this. But you can see here, you're getting more information. Preschool puzzle books age four would be a good keyword right there because it is something that people are searching for. So preschooler book, preschooler book about feelings, a book about space, bookshelf, books in Spanish, books on planet. If you were to back up, you can see here, preschooler activity books. So your counting book is an activity book. So there is another good phrase, preschooler activity book. So that would be a phrase that I would use in my keywords as well to describe the counting with robots book. So once you entered your keywords, you're simply just going to move on to categories. 
Inside of categories, you have to choose two. Don't overthink this as well. You can actually contact Amazon at a later date and add more, add more categories, as well as they will automatically categorize your book. So you have to pick two. So this book is about counting and it's for kids. So you could simply just scroll down here and you could find some, a category that makes sense. For example, games. It's a general game. It's not really a game, but it is a book about puzzles. It's also a book that has activities in it. So that works. You could go back up here and you could go to juvenile nonfiction. You could look in this category. You could say it's an activity book. Now you have games, puzzles, juvenile nonfiction activity books. Click save. Again, don't overthink this. If your book is large print, meaning it's over 16 point font, go ahead and select large print. This typically applies to puzzles, but if your book has large print in it, which our book does, large print is okay. Does this book contain language situations or images inappropriate for children under 18 years of age? No, save and continue. Now here is where you're going to actually put the information in about your paperback content. Assign me a free KDP ISPN. You're gonna click that. It's gonna assign you an ISBN for your book. Don't overthink this. Just use the ISBN Amazon provides because you're only gonna be selling it on Amazon. Publication date optional. Here you're going to select premium color interior with white paper. Select a different size. Our book is 8.5 by 8.5. No bleed bleed. We talked about this in the other videos. Go ahead, no bleed. Pick the format you want, matte or glossy. In this case, I'm gonna go with glossy because it's a kid's book. Now we're at the point where we're going to upload those two PDFs we talked about at the beginning of the video. Upload your paperback manuscript, upload your book cover. Of course, to upload your paper book manuscript, you're just going to click here. You're going to select your manuscript here, which is the PDF. You're going to select open. Of course, that may look a little different if you're on a Windows box. Same principle. You're just finding the file that is your manuscript, your 24 pages that we created in the interior of your book, and you're simply going to upload it. That's going to save. You can use the cover creator, but we created our own cover in the other video. So we're going to upload that file, upload your cover file. Again, this is the cover file right here. It's the full cover file that we created, which is this file right here, the front, the back of the book, as well as the spine. We're simply just uploading that. You can see the save was successful. Here, book preview, preview your file to check for formatting and print quality issues. As soon as everything is processed, meaning your manuscript is processing and your cover is uploaded and it's processing, now what you can do, all you have to do is click launch preview and you will be able to see your book, exactly what it's gonna look like when the printing process occurs and Amazon gets ready to print the book to ship it out as a physical book. Here it's preparing your files. It's gonna walk through this. This can take several minutes. So you just have to be patient and wait for it to, to finish because you have to do this to move on to the next stage. Okay, once that's finished processing, you'll be able to see inside of the print viewer. Again, quality check, please check. If there are errors, it will tell you the errors and it will not let you proceed. These please checks are just telling you, make sure that you're happy with everything because anything inside of these red lines and this white line, to include the barcode cannot be covered up, meaning your elements cannot be on these edges. It will be an error when they print the book and they actually cut it and make it a physical book to deliver. It will get cut off, but you can see the front cover. You can see the spine here. You can see the back cover, and then you have the ability to actually click and walk through your book. This will be exactly the way it looks when the book is open and you're reading the pages and you're flipping them over. It will look just like this. So if you're happy with the way it looks and there aren't any errors, go ahead and click approve. So that will return you back to your paperback content and you just have to scroll back down through here and make sure that everything is still the same. Your manuscript is ready. You previewed your book. Now you have a summary, a color interior with white paper, no bleed, glossy, 8.5 by 8.5, page counts 24, and it's gonna tell you how much it's going to cost to print this book, $3.65. And on the next page, is where you're gonna set your pricing, and your pricing is going to be how much you're gonna be able to make over $3.65, because that's how much Amazon is going to charge you. So click save and continue, and move on to pricing. 
So this is going to talk about all territories worldwide, or you can select individual territories. Of course, if your book is only or only applies to certain territories, then select those territories. But for the most part, all territories worldwide will work because you want to sell your book as many places as possible. Here, the primary marketplace, you drop down. Typically, that'll be Amazon.com, but select what makes the most sense for your book. It sell, it'll tell you here minimum and maximum pricing, and you can see that $6.08 is the minimum price. So, for example, if we were to set $10, it's going to calculate royalties at 60%, meaning minus the $3.65 Printing costs and royalties will be $2.35. Expanded distribution, this means that other people can purchase your book and then resell it and you'll get 35 cents for that. Up to you whether you want to make that 35 cents off the expanded distribution or not. Check that, don't check it, but make sure that you understand what it is by clicking here and you can see that your paper book can reach more distributors if you want that to happen. Terms and condition, can take up to 72 hours for your book to be available for purchase on Amazon. Until then, the book status will be in review on your bookshelf. You will simply click publish your paperback book right there and it will go into review. So what it'll look like on your KDP direct publishing bookshelf, it will look just like this, Count the Robots, a fun picture puzzle book, and it will say in review and it will have the price right there. In this case, we settled on $9.25. This will typically take three to four days. It can take a little longer. You just have to wait until they review it. They will review it, they will approve it, they will or deny it. If they deny it, they will typically tell you why they deny it. Typically it's for formatting errors or you've selected a title or a author name that is already in use or copyrighted. But other than that, your book is in for review. You just have to wait and then you'll see your book go live and then when we see our book go live, we'll come back and we'll talk about the next steps once our book is published. So if you have any questions, go ahead, ask them in the comments. I'll be more than happy and look forward to answering those questions. If this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, there'll be a typewriter right here. Subscribe to the channel by clicking on that typewriter. More videos right here on the end screen. Click those, keep watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.